In this video, I'm going to talk about what it was like to have to take a polygraph test as someone who is innocent and what, you know, the topic around the polygraph test being my own daughter. And so why I had to take a polygraph test in the first place. So I had to take one because my daughter suffered from shaken baby syndrome and they can't force you to take a polygraph test, but it was a part of investigation. So whenever my daughter was shaken, we were investigated, my, myself and my now ex-husband, her biological father, we were both investigated by DCS, which was the state, you know, I don't even know the correct terms for this, but the state people who come in whenever there's, you know, suspected child abuse. So they offered, you know, I guess to clear our, you know, name or whatever they offered for us to take a polygraph test, which you have to volunteer to do. So when they said, are you, would you take a polygraph test to prove that you are innocent? I was like, sure, I'll take a polygraph test, you know? Um, and I did not feel any resistance to that other than just a little bit of fear of like, what am I doing? Like, I just had my daughter shaken. I just found out she was injured. This is like a terrible situation to be in. And now I'm like having to go leave her at the hospital to go take a polygraph test. And so that was the biggest, you know, like resistance I had to it. And when they asked my now ex-husband to take a polygraph test, he was very resistant to that. He's like, well, why should I take a polygraph test? I have done nothing. There's no reason for me to take a polygraph test. And you know, to me, that's probably like the one way that you know someone really needs to take it and is probably lying about something is when they don't want to take it. And you know, I could have understood if my ex-husband was like, I don't want to leave my baby. You know, even though he wasn't there with her all the time, it was me who was there with her all the time. And I just can't stand to leave her can this wait? You know, can I do this after I know she's okay? Things like that. I would have understood the resistance to going, but whenever you're saying things like, you know, I shouldn't have to, to take one and like with an attitude like that, then it pretty much tells people already you're guilty of something. So, um, I'm just going to walk through what it was like. So I went to the, I guess, justice center, um, at the place that they were doing these investigations and you walk into the jail, I guess, and um, they first question you before you're questioned. So I thought it was kind of odd and I felt pretty nervous going in just because I didn't know what to expect. I felt like, what if it fails? You know, all these questions are going through my head of, you know, what if it's a false negative or whatever? What if, what if something happens and, you know, I'm not lying, but it says I'm lying. Like those are the thoughts that go through your head. So, they question you and basically tell you the questions that they're going to ask you in the um, actual test. So, I don't know. I thought that was odd. I don't know the exact reason they do that, but they just went through all the questions. And some of those in que questions included things like, you know, do you know what happened to your daughter the night of blank? And um, the... I, I'm trying to remember the questions now. It's been so long. It's been like three years or four, six years or so. Um, but they were just going through all the questions that you would expect them to ask in a shaken baby syndrome case. You know, do you know who shook Krista was a question. And, you know, of course, my answer was no. I don't really know. And that kind of feels like a trick question whenever they were saying that they thought it was my ex-husband. But at that time, I didn't know who shook her because the logical answer was like, yes, she was alone with him, but I was still in denial of, did he really shake her? You know, that was, I can't imagine a child's father shaking them. It was just so hard to believe. So anyway, they I asked the questions before the actual test, but they kind of explained how, you know, you just have to answer to the best of your ability. So a question like that, like, do you know who shook her? It's kind of like, well, yes and no at the same time. So those were kind of just confusing question questions. Um, but then they would ask random questions like, have you ever lost your temper? Have you ever um, been in like an argument? Have you ever been in a fight? Have you ever physically hurt someone? And so those were the questions that they were asking. Um, and then, so you walk into this like dimly lit room 
small room. You sit in a chair. You're sitting on something that's tracking whatever. And then they put a blood pressure cuff on your arm. And then you have, you know, the pulse thing on your finger. And I feel like they had something under my feet, too. And then so you're sitting just looking at a blank wall. And you've got the, like, the operator of the test to one side of you who is going to ask you the questions. And so, you know, just being in that room, I think back to those moments and it's like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I went through that. What a time. Like, I can't even imagine doing that right now if I had to do this again for some reason. Um, but, so he just went through the same exact questions and there, you don't really know anything during the test. It's not like they're saying you're passing or failing. And so you come out of the room and they go back into this questioning room and they'd let you know, I guess, how you did. And they start questioning. And so they told me, like, you failed one question. And the question was, have you ever hurt anyone? So I, they're like, can you explain, like, what you were thinking whenever you, um, like, failed that question? Like, whenever you heard that question? And so I was thinking, you know, there was a time that my sister and I, when we were, like, 17 years old, we got in a fist fight. Like, we were fighting each other over something dumb. I probably, I don't even remember what the reason was. But we were, like, fighting each other. And so, my mind, during that moment, went back to, yes, I have hurt someone. I've hurt my own sister. But, you know, I, when I explained that to them, they're like, oh, that's, you know, ev like, everybody goes through something like that. Like, we were wrestling. You, like, you, we totally understand that. That's nothing, you know, not a big deal at all. And so, I passed all the other questions. So, they had no reason to, like, further investigate me or believe that I was lying about things. Um, and so, the way that they treated me, I never really felt like a criminal. You know, I wasn't a criminal, but they never treated me like that either. So, even if I was a criminal, I don't know how they would have treated me if I had failed the entire thing. But they never treated me badly at all. They treated me very nicely and fairly, I think. Um, so, you know, overall, I felt like it was an okay experience. It was just adding to the trauma of things, of having to even do that. Um, and then my thoughts about how long mine took compared to my ex-husband's. So, mine probably took a total of like three-ish hours. And my ex-husband was gone to take his, at least that's where he said he was going, for like six hours. And I remember calling him like, where are you, where are you, where, like, why is this taking so long? And so I think he took his after mine. And that's how I knew, like, something is up here. This isn't right. Why is yours taking six hours? And so whenever my ex-husband, I guess I can go into that on another video. I'll make a second video on exactly what happened during my ex-husband's polygraph. Well, not during, but explain things about his polygraph test and for one, why it wasn't used in court, couldn't be used in court, but the, the fact that he did fail it. So I'll talk about that on the next video, but I just wanted to talk about what it was actually like to be in a polygraph test. You know, you see them on TV, you see these things, but to have that real life experience, I just wanted to share that. And this is part of what a parent of a child who's been abused, whether you did it or not, you know, goes through. And so I just want to spread more awareness about that and I'll see you on the next video.